Hi everybody, my name is Colleen Evans. I'm Director of Natural Sciences at the Staten Island Museum. And today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about bioindicators and then show me what I consider to be the most exciting one to find when you're doing work in freshwater systems. Uh, so a bioindicator is an organism that can tell us something about the health of an ecosystem. So usually if you find it present in an ecosystem, it means that it's healthy or that it's doing well. Um, and I have a lot of experience working in freshwater and Usually what we look for in those kind of systems are three specific groups of organisms. You look for Ephemeroptera, which is mayflies, Plecoptera, which is stoneflies, and then Trichoptera, which are catusflies. Um, those all, all three of those, their juvenile stages are found in fresh water, usually in flowing water. And if they are present in a lot of diversity, that tells us something about the health of that particular stream system. Uh, but my favorite one, or at least the one I think is most exciting to find, um, are catus fly larvae. So catus flies broadly kind of have like two groups for their larval stage. They are either net builders or they're case builders. And so what that means is either they are spinning little nets or webs out of silk um, that then the water goes through. Um, it'll catch a bunch of the matter that's going through the water column um, and they'll eat it. The other ones, the case builders, do build themselves like these wee little cases out of whatever is available. Um, and so they spin themselves, there's these little protective cases, and that's what I want to share with you guys. So these are just some examples of catus fly cases. Uh, so catus fly cases are somewhat species specific, definitely group specific. And so some only build it like out of tiny little sticks, or maybe only use tiny little stones or pieces of like sand and things like that. Or you can see here in the center here, there's a lot that are made out of like leaves and big chunks of wood. And so usually you can tell which ones you're looking at based on those kind of characteristics. They also, some of them here are extremely geometric in shape. So again, these ones up at the top, they're extremely squared off. So they're made from these like tiny little bits of sticks and wood. And they actually have like neat little angles and everything. Um, or my favorite ones, which are over here and they're very wee. So those are Helicocycidae. So those ones actually make kind of like a snail shell. So they make these beautiful little curled, swirly shells or cases around themselves out of like little bits of sand and things like that. Um, and they're just super cute and very tiny. Uh, so Catus fly larvae spend their entire juvenile stage um, in the water column. And then when they are ready, they will pupate and they will come out as adults. Um, Catus fly adults can often be mistaken for like a small moth. Um, they look a lot pretty similar, um, but they have slightly different wing shapes and things like that. Um, they're actually pretty easy uh, for an entomologist to tell the difference, but for a layperson, it's pretty difficult. Um, you would probably just think it was a moth and that's okay. They're pretty closely related, um, but their larvae are super cool and very cute. So thank you for joining me today. Um, and I hope to see you again.